And we begin with the NSA's ongoing mass surveillance of Americans. Speaking on a condition of anonymity, intelligence officials are shedding more light on the actual mechanisms by which the NSA goes about scooping up data belonging to American citizens. Published today in the New York Times, officials explain that in targeting a foreign citizen with surveillance, the NSA casts a wide net on all communications flowing out of the United States that may be in direct contact with the foreign target or simply referencing the target or information related to the target. Officials go on to explain, the NSA is temporarily copying and then sifting through the contents of what is apparently most emails and other text-based communications that cross the border. The official said that a computer searches the data for the identifying keywords or selectors and stores those that match so that human analysts could later examine them. The remaining communications, the official said, are deleted. The entire process takes a small number of seconds. Of course, this is just one component of the massive surveillance apparatus that Americans are just becoming aware of thanks to NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden's leaks. Also this week, Reuters uncovered a parallel data collection program run out of the Drug Enforcement Agency's Special Operations Division. This division gathers intelligence from multiple sources, including the NSA, to assist in drug investigations. Although DEA agents are instructed to hide the paper trail of this intelligence while conducting an investigation. It's since been revealed that the IRS, the FBI, the CIA, and the NSA all cooperate with this Special Operations Division. Now, all of these revelations have sparked a fractious debate on Capitol Hill over the constitutionality of these domestic surveillance programs. Lawmakers are on, the re on recess for the month of August, but left on the agenda for when they get back are a number of bills to restrict the NSA's spying programs and shed light on the secret FISA court that oversees the legality of these surveillance programs. They range from aggressive reforms like Congressman Rush Holt's Surveillance State Repeal Act, which repeals both the Patriot Act and the FISA Amendments Act, to more modest reforms like ones floated by Senate Intel Chairwoman Dianne Feinstein, just to limit the number of years the NSA can store collected data. So while it does look like change is coming to the NSA, the question is who will lead the change and what will it look like? Joining me now to help make sense of all these reform efforts is Heidi Bogosian, Executive Director of the National Lawyers Guild from New York, and Brian Dugan, technologist at Open Technology Institute here in D.C. Welcome to you both. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. Heidi, I want to start with you. Do you think these leaks about the NSA have raised enough attention in Congress to actually pass some meaningful reform? There's no doubt that the leaks have changed uh, the consciousness of the country. And I think that when the public is concerned, hopefully that leaks up to the legislators. Uh, I think it's useful to look at the overall picture, which is we're in a state of perpetual war, and that many of the reforms that we're hearing about, which is a good thing, uh, need to be taken in that context. Uh, Thomas Jefferson said that it's very difficult to preserve our freedom when we're in the midst of perpetual war. So I think it's a great start, but there are specific things that can be done and people need to pressure legislators to do them. So Heidi, you would say that this can be drawn all the way back to the AUMF from 2001 that kind of started the ball rolling on, on this uh, expanded war and expanded surveillance state. I think that the jargon of a war on terror has really preyed into public fears, uh, allowed hastily passed legislation starting with the USA Patriot Act and then the FISA Reauthorization Act and warrantless wiretapping, things that we don't know about, secret legal interpretations, to run amok in many ways. Brian, I want to turn it over to you. And there's a number of options being floated around right now. We have very strong options, like what Congressman Rush Holt is saying, hey, let's repeal the surveillance state by getting rid of the Patriot Act and the FISA Amendments Act. What do you, what do you make of that? I think those are good first steps. I think that um, uh, uh, acts that attempt to address the authority of, of, uh, of the court to authorize you know, all the way down to uh, analysts to make the, de to make the decision uh, about whether or not data should be collected. That's obviously you know, way, way out of bounds. That authority needs to be put back in the executive branch. Um, and the 
uh, but there are other bills on the docket or in being discussed right now that focus on government and corporate transparency. And we've seen how that type of transparency has been limited in the past. Google has had a transparency report for uh, a couple of years now, and that obviously did not include all of the data that was being collected at the time. So there are good first steps, but I think that you know there are there's an entire history of privacy legislation going back to the you know uh, starting with uh, ECPA. Uh, and through CALEA before the Patriot Act was passed, they actually mandate certain types of surveillance that should also be addressed. Right. Uh, Heidi, there's, lawmakers have suggested, and th this goes to what Brian was just saying about not just government, but corporations kind of retaining our data. A lot of lawmakers have come forward and said the government should get out of the business of collecting data, telecom communications companies are, are telecom companies are already doing this let the government rely on telecom companies to collect the data and then the government can go to telecom companies with specific requests should would reform like that put us at ease or is there still some uncomfortableness about telecom companies storing all our data and being uh, a rubber stamp for the government and handing it over to them the fact that uh, private corporations, in many cases military contractors, conduct approximately 70 percent of United States intelligence should be of enormous concern to Americans. They're uh, not held accountable to the same constitutional strictures that our U.S. government is. And uh, the authorities who took an oath to protect and uphold the Constitution are effectively being let off the hook as corporations do their big business for them. And the partnership between corporations and the government is a very tight one because, of course, corporations produce the equipment and analyze the information that is being used to gather this data. One of the big uh, motivators behind reform is that there needs to be transparency to these programs. Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren has introduced legislation to allow telecom companies to reveal how many requests they get and how many of their customers are being surveilled. Um, Senator Al Franken has introduced similar legislation in the Senate that would also require the government to disclose this sort of information. Heidi, would just informing people of how broad these programs are uh, work to encourage more people to push their lawmakers to push for even stronger reforms to these to these programs? I think it's important that in addition to some of the court cases that are already being brought forward, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, for example, is going to be suing uh, telecommunications providers, which listeners, viewers should know was tried years ago, but the government gave them immunity. Uh, and also said that you couldn't prove with a certainty that you were being monitored. Now we know that's different. I think that public outrage is very important. As we saw in the 70s with the church committee, it was public outrage that called for comprehensive investigation into uh, COINTELPRO and covert spying on Americans. I hope that we harness some of that same outrage now and put pressure on companies and legislators to make things transparent. Brent, it seems like that outrage is growing and there is a movement building on the Hill. But I'm worried that you have these reformers like Rush Holt and Ron Wyden who are pushing for strong reforms. But then you also have people like Senator Dianne Feinstein who are and Mike Rogers who are big proponents of these programs. What sort of phony reforms might we see coming from that camp that might not really change anything? Like, I, for example, Senator Dianne Feinstein says we should reduce the amount of years that the NSA can hold the data from five down to two. Is that something that we should be happy with if that's all we get? Well, so the, what, what, what the usefulness of this data is, is it goes into uh, a type of machine learning database. And even after the original messages are deleted or supposedly deleted, uh, your data, all of the data that's being collected, still remains in these massive databases that are used to, to make these decisions. So in, in some sense or other, that data will always be there and will always be used to make decisions about whether or not an analyst should pay attention to a specific communication or not. So. On, on a technological level, that only matters so much because names, location information, uh, actual content will always remain in some form because that data will always be useful to the surveillance apparatus. We had a, a former NSA whistleblower, Russell Tice, on, and he was talking about how the NSA is basically surveilling everybody, including Senator Obama several years ago. 
And we heard uh, Eric Snowden or Edward Snowden say that uh, you know he could surveil the president of the United States from his desk. Is there a concern? And I want to get both your your inputs here in the last minute we have. Is there a concern that the NSA and the intelligence community has grown so large that it's impossible to rein in? Brian, let's start with you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there are something like a thousand uh, or a, many, many thousands of people in the United States with top secret level clearance. Um, it is impossible to maintain uh, a level of trust that guarantees there will be no one who uh, betrays you know, the, the, the trust placed within all those people, as Edward Snowden did. Um, now, Obviously, in the case of Edward Snowden and for whistleblowing, this is a great thing. But it's impossible to, uh, to maintain that level of loyalty for so many people. Heidi, in just the last 30 seconds, I mean, how do we go about kind of tackling this giant that's been created with the NSA? Well, I think the awareness that this has indeed become an information uh, business. It's, it's enormous. We've built a huge data center in Utah to analyze, to hold computers, to analyze this information. People need to hold corporations accountable. And I think uh, the power that has been vested in this big business uh, apparatus has been enormous. And it's really, once again, in the hands of the people to say, I don't want to do business with these providers if you don't pull rain back what you've been doing and you know for example don't build back doors into your equipment so the government and law enforcement can plug right in All right well said that was Heidi Bogosian executive director of the National Lawyers Guild Brian Dugan technologist at Open Technology Institute thank you both thank you thank you